This is the Hiking Through Life podcast. We've all been gifted a journey called life. Let's see where the journey leads us today. Welcome to the Hiking Through Life podcast, where we talk with people who in some way, shape, or form have been influenced by the outdoors. I'm Andy, the producer of this podcast, and my lovely wife, Sarah, will be your host. Together, we make up Hiking Through Life. This podcast is all about bringing all kinds of people who are inspired by the outdoors and sharing their stories. We hope that by sharing people's stories, it inspires others to get out and live a more meaningful life. Tune in every week for new episodes, or better yet, subscribe to the Hiking Through Life podcast on your favorite podcast provider. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with others. Also, if you have a story to share or know of anyone who might be interested in being a guest on this podcast, head on over to hikingthroughlife.net slash podcast and get in touch with us. Now sit back and enjoy this week's episode. So we're super excited to talk with you. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for taking time to be on. Obviously, we're going to talk about Nigel, the litter hunter. <laughs> I was just of watching course. some of the YouTube videos you created for him. Yeah, <laughs> they're a little ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he's like this Australian character. Is that the whole idea? Well, so I guess I'll, I'll back up a little bit and, and explain, <laughs> explain all that. So first of all, um, by way of introduction, Phil Monson uh, I've always been outdoorsy, if you will, if, if if we want to use that that word. And you know, I grew up in Idaho, grew up in Oregon, and and then have spent the majority of my life in Utah, and have just always been very active in the outdoors, and have always had it ingrained into my psyche of you know the the notion of of leaving it better than you found it. You know, it kind of started back when. When I was a kid, I we, you know, we we went to Yellowstone National Park a lot, and I found some petrified wood that I thought was awesome. So I, you know, was a kid and thought it was a cool rock, and I put it in my pocket. And my parents <laughs> found out about it, and then, <laughs> and then taught me a very quick lesson of, you know, if everybody took that, then there wouldn't be enough, you know, for anybody to see. Nobody would be able to enjoy that. So you know, you, we we leave those things here. And, and then there was also, you know. I think my mom probably said something like, you know, the rangers will just put you in jail if you take that from the park. <laughs> so, you know, there, there was that. But then also, you know, I remember very distinctly going on camping trips in, in Oregon, in the, in the Mount Hood wilderness. And we, you know, we, we, as a scout group, we came across a campsite and that, that was obviously trash from the night before. And our scout leader said, boys, we're going to, take a few minutes and we're going to clean this up and it's very important that we leave it better than we found it and you know as a kid that that sucks that's not fun cleaning up somebody else's garbage but we did it and and those lessons have 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 translated into into adulthood and um you know a couple of years ago i just i just saw this ridiculous rise in in litter and in places that yeah, i never thought was would have been littered you know we were up in the in the uentas in the you know, it's a pretty popular uh, area, the Mirror Lake Highway, and beautiful area up in the in the uh, Uintas in northern Utah. And we just, you know, by the end of the end of our little hike, we had filled up a whole garbage bag. It was it was of litter. It was just crazy. And then more and more as I as I was going out on hikes, I would find litter, and I would just be picking it up, and I and I'd find I didn't have enough garbage bags to clean all of it up. And I and I was getting really angry you know it's obvious you know when you when you see that and you have a connection to the outdoors it's it's very easy it has a very easy emotion to go to is just anger and you're just so fed up with how <laughs> ridiculous people can be to well, leave right that and like you said like in places where you think you would never see this stuff like these very like remote trails that people are going back on you would never suspect it like i kind of ex it's sad, but I expect to see trash like in the neighborhood and at the parks near my house now. <laughs> yep. It's really mm -hmm. sad that that's expected, but that it's c happening now in all of our national parks. It, it's just, it's just crazy. And I, and I had this epiphany that, you know, whether it's 
you know, Instagram or social media in general, that this idea that outdoor popularity is outpacing outdoor awareness. And maybe people just don't, don't realize that <laughs> you're not supposed to <laughs> leave all your garbage in, in, the, in the woods, I, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but I, I would start videoing myself picking up garbage which is odd <laughs> as I say that out loud, <laughs> but, but it, would mo it was more you know, awareness and whatever little platform I've got on, on social media, it was a way to say, this is ridiculous. And, and I would, I would kind of, kind of be angry about it and, and shout and you know, some people responded to it really well. And a lot of people were like, dude, you, you need to be a little bit more positive about this. You know, and, and, and positivity goes a lot, a lot, uh, a lot further. And, and, and that resonated with me. And so I just thought, Jeez, Louise, how do we make this as entertaining and educational as as possible, and and do it in a fun way? And so, I've got a really terrible Australian accent, and I make it very well known that it's it's terrible. But that's kind of the fun of it. And then I I saw how uh, the character Muldoon from Jurassic Park. He's the guy that, you know, is like, oh, clever girl. Oh, that sure, guy. sure. He's got the short shorts. He's got the knee-high socks. I mean, he's just, he looks the part, right? And I was like, that's the look I need to have. I, I'm going to I'm gonna go short shorts, the safari shirt, knee-high socks. We're, gonna, we're just going to go after it, and we're going we're gonna to call it the Litter Hunter. And I always thought Nigel was just a, a, a unique, great name. It, it's different. <laughs> so just, Nigel the Litter Hunter was born, and we, and, and we just started going out, and it, and it was kind of funny, you know, it was like, it, it started out with videos of, oh, crikey, there's a, there's a whole family of beer cans here, they're, they're in their natu unnatural habitat, let's get them out of it, you know, just really, really ridiculous. Um, but, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's resonated, thankfully, it's, it's caught on, people, people have enjoyed, one, the ridiculousness of it all, and uh, we, we try to make it funny and, and, and try to bring entertainment in, in, in a positive and educational way to a really terrible problem. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very long answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think putting like this entertainment piece into it too is going to only capture more of an audience. But yeah, that video, the one I was watching earlier, there was like a baby carrier. <laughs> it's like, what are people yeah. doing leaving baby carriers by? It's, it's wild. I mean, the things that I see and, and find it's, you know, it's, it's the baby carriers that that one looked like the back of it snapped. And so, oh, well, I guess we'll just leave it here. <laughs> why, why would we bother taking it out with us? And, and, and it's things like that, that, you know, what I get a lot of comments on are, are people saying, I knew that there was a litter problem. I didn't realize how much of a litter problem there was. And I, I'll go back to the same places week after week. And it's the same, same thing. It's just trashed. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm cleaning up two or three bags of, of litter every week from the same location and, and people are kind of realizing, holy cow, this is definitely a problem. And, and what's really cool is when people will watch the videos and then they'll come back and respond that, look, I, I've started bringing a garbage bag with me on, on my hikes now, or my kids watch Nigel the Litter Hunter and they want to go out and be, and be litter hunters, which is, I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, that's really cool. And, and exciting and and it's on one hand it's sad that we have to do that as a society but but on the other hand it's amazing that that people are stepping up and and willing to go out and and, and take care of these places that we that we all love and enjoy so it's that's cool yeah I mean it is really sad that that's what our society has come to and it just makes you wonder like yeah at what point did people start thinking it was okay to leave trash because obviously somebody started it at one point and then the rest of humanity just started following one after the other yeah yeah it's wild um I, and i and i and i have some theories behind it we'll share them you know, please we'll, we'll sure <laughs> when when i was growing up and and i'm dating myself here now but you know i'm a, a born in 81 and a, a child of of that era I, I grew up with woodsy owl and captain planet and all of these things that were just very much resources for kids to understand that litter is bad <laughs> you need to take care of these places and how to uh, be a good a good lancer i mean the the uh, 
catchphrase of give a hoot, don't pollute. I mean, that's, it's just so simple. And that resonated with me, with me as well. And there were also, you know, whether you love them or hate them back in the day, the Boy Scouts were, were very, uh, very pro being prepared and, and get out in nature, but be prepared and, and take care, leave it better than, than you found it. You know, it was Robert Baden Powell's um, whole thing that, that was kind of his last address to the, to the Boy Scouts was to leave the world better than he found it. And, and you just don't see much, if any of that anymore. And it's almost like this whole generation has, has grown up very much. And, and I, and again, I, you know, I, I, I get philosophical sometimes, but they, uh, you know, with the social media, it's just, it's just very much perpetuated this idea of, of it's me, 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 self-centeredness and not really caring about anything unless I get, I get some likes or whatever. So people will go out and they'll just, you know, they can trash some place and who cares, whatever, and, and, and leave. And they, they never really knew any different. They, they don't have this, this background or, or education, you know, wilderness education has, has completely left uh, the school. So I remember, I remember growing up that we would have constant field trips and we would go out and we would uh, go on hikes and we would have, you know, this kind of this wilderness education or, you know, there would be outdoor school that I, I remember uh, being very prominent and, and uh, we, you know, we would go out and have kind of wilderness preparedness and, and all those good things. And unfortunately, those, those things are just not, not there anymore. That, and that's more or less a kind of where I, where I see <laughs> kind of a lot of the disconnect with with nature is that education just hasn't hasn't been there it's it's like we've we've fully gone full you know we were talking about technology earlier it's like everything is just so focused on tech, you know, technology 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 te technology is is all the rage and we've forgotten about the wilderness and how important that is and as cool as technology is well wilderness is pretty cool too <laughs> you know last time i checked trees are kind of important um you know the environment is uh, you know we all live here that's that's kind of important so uh that that's the the challenge and and that's where i really try to to focus is is on wilderness education um you know kind of the tagline of it of adventure responsibly i think a lot of people like to get out and adventure but they really don't think about <laughs> the responsibility uh, part on there. It is just such this lack of education in people who are going to these places, I think, because, you know, like I do a lot of backpacking. So like, it's just like ingrained in my mind that you pack it in, you pack it out. Yep. But all these people who are going to these national parks might not necessarily be huge outdoorsy families. They're just going because they're these very popular places. Mm -hmm. But unless people have the education behind it. Yeah, yeah, exa exactly. And I, I even remember there in, in Utah in the, in the 90s, there was a really great program called Don't Waste Utah. And it was kind of like this. <laughs> I mean, it was over the top, but it, it was great. It was you know, this Mad Max character in a post-apocalyptic world and, you know, kind of going through and, and, you know, he, like one of the commercials is he, he picks up this, this lady off the side of the road who, who's hitchhiking and he's, he's driving with her and, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, this, uh, the, this lone guy with, he's, he's got his, his lady now. And then she throws her, her drink out the window and he stops and he, and he kicks her out. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it's over the top, it's ridiculous, but it, you know, it was just this, uh, this whole notion of, uh, you know, don't, don't waste Utah, don't, don't litter. And, and it was, it was really effective. And I think people, you know, and I think Woodsy Owl was, was really effective and you just don't see, it, it's almost like there's, there's so many other issues going on in the outdoors <laughs> like, like with vandalism and and overcrowding and all this they're almost like at their wits end of i we don't even know what <laughs> what what we should promote it anymore at this uh, at this point in time and 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 I, I i'm probably on bad terms with all the you know the tourism uh, bureau and, and and organizations here in utah because you know they'll they'll post to promote the state which is awesome that that's great uh, tourism dollars are are wonderful, especially for the for the rural communities, and they and they thrive and and, and survive on 
on tourism, but they post things and then <clears throat> they, they never give an educational piece about it. They never talk about being responsible tourists and, and how to respect these places that they're visiting or uh, you know and anything like that. And, and I always chime in, would be nice if you, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like the, uh, the you know, actually, uh, you know, as I, as I push up my glasses, uh, I'm always commenting out, guys, <laughs> it's great that you're doing this, but maybe leave a little note about leave no trace maybe leave a little note about the 10 essentials when you're going out and, <laughs> and hiking uh, you know because it's you know they're taking i mean they're even you know showing pictures of people doing these big hikes and in, in flip-flops i'm like oh my gosh please <laughs> please don't promote that <laughs> don't look quite prepared yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, the, the outdoors is at a very interesting kind of flux right now where it's, it's kind of all the rage. It's, it's cool to get outside and it is 100%. I support everybody getting outside that that's, you know, it's been a big part of my life. I wanted to be a part of, of everybody's life and to see the, the enjoyment, but you know, the caveat to that is, Hey, let's take care of these places so that they're around for many, many, many generations to come around. And I, I kind of see things as, you know, everything has a, uh, a kind of a waterfall effect to it. And if we're, if we're, trashing if we're littering these places that just kind of perpetuates the the issue then they were going to see more vandalism then we're going to see you know, issues like <clears throat> excuse me like we're already seeing where there's there's delicate formations that are being toppled over and you know and just it, it kind of goes goes from there and so my my big thing right now is 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 helping to educate on you know adventure responsibly understand what you're getting into and uh, and leave it leave it better than you found it. I, maybe I'm rambling. I apologize. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think you're sending a really good message, and it's just it's going back to like kind of where where it started. And you know, when you're talking about how it's just the outdoors has grown so much in popularity. When I was like scrolling through your Instagram page, like it looks like you're also a photographer, and you have all this like beautiful landscape photography in like your older posts. And then all of a sudden you just start posting about trash. Yeah. And I just think that your social media page in itself just sends this huge message that like people are liking all of your beautiful landscape photography photos, but then all of a sudden here's this message that you're sending. And it's basically like, guys, you're going to ruin this beautiful place if you don't start picking up your trash. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny and I, I do I do dabble in photography. I don't know how how great I'm in, at it, but I I do enjoy it. And well, I thought those photos were phenomenal. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate appreciate that. It, it you know, and the and the photography side of thing that was that's more of a you know, hey, it's a great way to get outside. It's it's uh, something fun and, and and enjoyable to do, and it you know, kind of drives you to go check out these you know, really cool and exotic places. And you know, photography is really fun. Um, but when I look at it in general photography doesn't really matter <laughs> unless it's um unless there's some meaning behind it and so i really started to to look into my messaging of yeah this is a great photo but it, isn't it nice to continue to preserve places like this hopefully it sends a message of 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 preservation and and the reason that that we need wilderness and then you're yeah you're absolutely right about kind of switching more from posting a lot of photography to more posting about the, the litter and, and the trash issues. And, and it's funny now because when I, whenever I do post a, you know, more of a, a landscape photo, I'll, I'll get people commenting, oh yeah, I, I almost forgot that you were a photographer because <laughs> you're always, uh, you know, posting about, about the, uh, the trash issues, which I'll, I'll take it as a compliment, but yeah. So like, what was the, the turning point for that? Like all of a sudden, were you just out one day photographing and thought I really need to send this trash message? Yeah. So I think, like, like I said, it is, you know, a couple of years ago that things really started to take a change and it was more of, holy cow, what, what do we need to do to, to change this? this tide and this issue that we're facing. And I don't know if it was ever particularly one, one specific thing. I, I guess if I had to nail it down, it was a little bit ago and I was just at this roadside arch uh, outside of, 
uh, Moab uh, called Wilson Arch. And it's, I mean, it's literally <clears throat> right off the side of the road. So very, very accessible, which is cool, uh, which is great. And I, I stopped there just to check it out and hike up to the, uh, to the inside of the arch. And yeah, I mean, it was just covered in garbage. Uh, all the, you know, the parking lot and, and the trail and the surrounding area. And I was car camping, so I did have a, a garbage bag with me. And I, I was picking things up. A, a car pulled up. And again, this doesn't help my, my feelings towards <laughs> social media and whatnot. But a car pulled up, a girl got out and she had, you know, one of those Navajo blankets. And they, they took a picture and then she got right back in the car and then they, they literally just dumped garbage out their car window. And generally I'm very nice and easygoing and, and uh, approachable, but uh, at that point in time, I, I got pretty, I mean, I'm literally picking up garbage <laughs> and then these guys just dump it out. Maybe they, maybe, maybe they thought I was there to pick it up, but I, I kind of lost it and in not so pleasant terms, told him to pick that up. And he goes, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And he, and he got out and he picked it up. Maybe he drove down the road and dumped it up. Who knows? But the, it was kind of that point. It's like, my gosh, I, I need to do all I can to get some messaging out there about the, the severity of this issue. Because people just, you know, it's, it's, it's just apathetic mindset. Like, you know, oh, it doesn't matter. There's, there's, and, and, and I guess that's, that's been more where, the major messaging has had started. And then from there, it's just, as I see more and more, you know, in, in rest areas up in there are canyons here in Utah and, and all these things that when I go there and, and there's more garbage every single time I go, it's just, it's just clearly there's, there's a disconnect <laughs> with folks and, and we've got to do everything that we can or, or, or everything that I can to help get that message across. And, 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 and do my part in helping to promote wilderness, wilderness ethics. So what I'm hearing is like, so at that, that moment when you were at that arch, I mean that, yeah, that sounds super frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> that really frustrated me too. <laughs> so was it like, I mean, that's kind of what kind of gave you this whole vision, envisionment, I guess, for Nigel? Is that where Nigel was kind of born? That was, <laughs> that was definitely the start of, of, really posting a lot more about picking up garbage and 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 doing the the videos and and going out and and showing that there was an issue and and kind of from there uh, I I like I said again that really kind of started me going up in the canyons more for the specific purpose of of picking up garbage and documenting that and then and then sharing that you know, and again, social media is like a, like a double-edged sword. On one hand, you get the, the, the idiots out there. On the other hand, you can use it as a, as, as a place of positivity. And, and that's where I would, you know, more, more post and, and kind of go on my, my little rants. And, and what would, what would really drive me crazy is, you know, I, there, there's, uh, there's two canyons here in Northern Utah called Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon, and they're, they're watersheds. And I'm finding tons of just disgusting garbage like right on the shore of, of, the, uh, of the rivers that go down through there and, then, and the creeks that go directly into our water source. And so that was, you know, I was kind of getting you know, pretty dang frustrated and, and somebody described me as the, as the old man yelling at kids to get off his lawn <laughs> in, those, in those early days. And I, you know, I, I took it in stride. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I guess that's what I am. Uh, but then, and then, yeah, it, it slowly started morphing into all right, how do we how do we make this a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more positive, uh, but also educational? And and yeah, that that kind of started the whole <laughs> the whole morphosis is in, into it. And then the yeah the the ridiculous outfit. I was watching Jurassic Park with my kids one day, and Muldoon came on. I'm like, that's it. That's that's the look. I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put myself out there with this ridiculous accent and and go pick up garbage, I I gotta have an outfit. So. That was it. So I went to my local Cabela's and and found the shortest cargo shorts I could find and these these amazing knee high hiking socks and went to it. <laughs> oh, that's so great! And so you said you have kids. Do your do your kids ever go participate with you? Oh yeah. And do they want to do they want to dress like Nigel as well? I don't know if they <laughs> if they want to dress 
do the dress up so much, but yeah, what, you know, um, whenever we go hiking, they, they know we, we bring a garbage bag and, and they've all got their little litter grabbers, uh, Mr. Grabs as we, as we call them. And uh, all the, all the litter grabbers I've, I've put googly eyes on them to, to kind of make them a little bit more kid friendly and, and funnier. Um, yeah, they, they, they'll go out and, and that's, what's cool is my, my kids will, you know, when we're going on hikes, they'll go, oh, there's a piece of litter and they'll, they'll go and grab it and, and pick it up. And, uh, what's, what's neat is, you know, generally on the trail, people are, are pretty cool and pretty nice and, and getting outdoors. And there's always a friendly, you know, hello and, or, you know, you're almost there, you know, to the end of the trail, but now it's, it's more people stopping and, and saying, thank you. And really taking a, a, a minute out of their day and, you know, to stop and, and say, thanks for what you're doing. That is pretty cool to see, you know, you got your family with you and you're out picking up <laughs> the trail and, and, uh, and, and taking care of it. And um, yeah, that's that, that type of thing is really at the heart of it, right. Is, is inspiring more people to, to take care of these places and, uh, and hopefully uh, get get this litter issue <laughs> solved in some one way or another well yeah and that's got to be refreshing to hear people saying thank you to you and you can you can only hope that that leaves the thought in those people's mm -hmm. minds yep. to ponder on the remainder of the day that oh i could easily go do that too yep because picking up trash is a very very simple task <laughs> yeah it's it's not hard <laughs> it's uh you know, you just, uh, there, there's actually a funny, uh, a, a pretty similar account to mine. It's called Peter Picks Up Trash. And, and he, he takes a picture of, of himself with, with a handful of garbage. And in like every caption, he's like, I picked this up during my lunch break today and I threw it away. It was very easy to do. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's cool to see, to see accounts like that. Oh, that's great. That's great. You guys should like start a worldwide I know. just like <laughs> story together. You could go on big puppet shows together or some all gamut. kinds yeah. of stuff. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Get the puppet <laughs> shows back. We'll do some uh, random kids assemblies with the puppets. You know, there's always yeah. there's always weird puppets at, at the kids assemblies. We'll we'll just <laughs> we'll just add picking up litter to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the book, Nigel the Litter Hunter? I mean, let's just talk about that book, how it came about, how long have you been working on it? Yeah, so the, the idea is, again, going back to education and where, where does that education need to be? And a while back, someone was like, this needs to be, you know, a kid, this is like a perfect kid's book. Or, well, I, I mean, even going back to there is, um, I generally watch what I say, but I really have to watch what I say on, on the, on the Instagram stuff is because people were like, oh, I watch this with my kids, which is cool. I was like, oh, oh well, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, you know, so I can, I can really watch my language because <laughs> there's, there's some things I'd like to say, but I don't, uh, you know, again, keeping it, keeping it positive, but, you know, really, uh, you know, people saying that or that, you know, oh, this could be a great kids book. Uh, you know, kind of this, this this whole this whole story of of going out and litter hunting, and what really drove it home was, and I'm I'm sorry, I uh, I get I get emotional about about weird things, but so I, I'm going to try and keep it together. But we were we were at a family gathering, and my uh, we were talking about you know recycling and sustainability and all this stuff, and my little nephew. He goes, and, and, and they live, um, you know, a, a little ways away um, uh, in Utah, but a little bit further. And, and he goes, yeah, I was actually in class talking about sustainability and, and recycling and, and litter and, and how we take care of the earth. And this kid goes, he raises his hand and he said, yeah, that's why we have Nigel the Litter Hunter. Then the teacher was like, you guys know about that? And, and, and he was telling, and I was like, holy cow, this has like reach you know, into like kids in there and they're watching. And then the, the teacher pulled up the YouTube videos and <laughs> my poor nephew was, was probably mortified and, and super embarrassed, but uh, you know, they're, they're watching this. And then, and then he did raise his hand. He's like, Hey, fun fact. That's actually my uncle. Yeah. His uncle parades around in short shorts in the woods. So 
you know, take that for, he'll have to unpack that later when he's uh, going through therapy. But, um, you know, it, it was, it was cool to, to hear that. And that's when it was, it was really like, you know what, I'm always talking about how Woodsy Owl influenced me and Captain Planet influenced me as I was growing up. And, and, and I'm always uh, harping on this. We need more education. We need more education for this next generation coming up. And I thought, well, why not? me why don't why don't we do that yeah, yeah we kind of got this story we've got this 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 uh, train going why don't we why don't we take it into this next uh next next level and i'm i'm not necessarily a, a great uh artist certainly not not in terms of uh, character development but uh, a, a good friend of mine who who i've known for for 20 plus years um is a wonderful artist and uh, and designer and so i reached out to him and pitched around what i was what i was thinking and he was he was all about it, which I was I was excited. So he's he's the illustrator, uh, Alex Chamberlain, and uh, the, the first draft of the story was was pretty terrible. It, it wasn't that great, and the second draft of it also wasn't uh, much better. But as as we've kind of evolved and, and worked on this, we we've got a story that we think is is pretty good. Where basically it's it's the idea of there's just this regular guy, Nigel, who likes to get out. In nature, he, he's not necessarily uh, particularly skilled at anything, but he, he does see the value of nature, and he likes to to go and hike and camp and and all those good things. And he he he's out in nature one day, and he goes to his favorite campsite, and he finds it covered in garbage. And he kind of looks around and he asks, you know, who who's going to clean this up? And of course, you know, nobody's nobody's there, nobody answers, and so he leaves it. He's like, well, you know, this place is a mess. I'm going to go go somewhere else. And he goes to another campsite. And he finds the same thing. Only this time, it, you know, it's there's a bunch of broken camping chairs that are just left behind. There's a, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, food wrappers and the the fire pit that's left unattended, and, and the and the coals are still smoldering, which I do come across quite a bit, which is also a, a, a huge issue. Uh, and and he and he again asks, you know, who is going to clean this up? And then magically, Mister Grabs, who's the the litter grabber, the sentient litter grabber says, well, hey, why don't you pick me up and I'll, and I'll explain to you who can, who can pick this up. And he, he picks up the litter grabber and hoists it into the air and magically transforms into Nigel the litter hunter. Uh, you know, very over the top, very ridiculous. Well, but that's just so perfect for kids. It, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's just so perfect that this like litter grabber is coming to life. That's what like children are looking for. They're looking for ridiculous, crazy things. And I'm a, I'm a preschool teacher, so I totally, oh, totally perfect. understand. Yes. <laughs> so it's kind of like this, uh, you know, He-Man thing where he hoists hoist the sword up and he becomes He-Man. I'm certainly not, uh, not, not likening myself to that but you know that's kind of the idea and, and so when he becomes Nigel the litter hunter he he changes you know his his outfit changes he's got the short shorts on he's got the knee high socks it's, and then all of a sudden his his mind becomes open and he understands you know major litter issues like oh you know it kind of starts going into you know he, he understands that water bottles take 450 years to decompose styrofoam takes up to 500 years and he you know it, it gets really ridiculous and and I think pretty humorous where, you know, with the 450 years thing, he's like, he's, he, Nigel started to wonder if maybe Christopher Columbus left some of these water bottles behind and they're still here. Even talks about things like, you know, food, food littering. You know, a lot of people were always, you know, kind of grew up with the notion that leaving banana peels and the, and the orange peels are, are fine. But he talks about, hey, that's still unsightly. It's, it's not natural for this um, environment. Animals can, can get hurt if they, if they eat it. And it, you know, it doesn't decompose overnight. It, it takes quite a while still. And, you know, it starts talking about how to, how to pick that up. And the whole, whole notion, you know, is where it comes to is he finally cleans up all the garbage and he's like, all right, well, our work here is done. We're, we're good to go. And the, and the litter grabber goes, uh, not even close. You know, there's, there's a lot of litter out there and, and we need more, more litter hunters than ever to, to be out and, and taking care of, of nature. And, and at the end of it, he, he goes, Wait, so I'm not, you know, I'm not a superhero after all, you know, what, what was the deal here? And, and Mr. Grabs, the literature says, on the contrary, anybody who cleans up nature and takes care of it can be a superhero. And uh, it, it, it's pretty short and sweet. It's, you know, it's going to be 25 pages, fully, full color and illustration. And I, you know, the illustrations are pretty incredible. Alex has, has done a great job and we've, I've read it to a bunch of different kids to get their take. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of funny things in there, like, 
you know, Nigel's picking up dirty underwear that somebody left behind and how gross, <laughs> you know, he's like, oh my gosh, which is very much a real case scenario, but. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, whole- <laughs> I've seen that. It's totally a yeah. real thing. Did you, um, did you get to go read it to your nephew's classroom? Uh, no, not yet. That that's on the docket though. Once, uh, you know, hopefully we, we get this, uh, get this funded. We're doing the self self publishing route, uh, and doing a, a Kickstarter. And, and I'm wondering if, uh, did I pick the all time worst time to launch that? Or am I a brilliant strategist? Cause everybody's home and has nothing to do, but <laughs> surf on their computer, um, all, you know, on social media all day. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're getting pretty close to, to, the funding, I you know, feeling pretty good about it. We're we're a little over halfway there. We've we've only launched for four days now, which is which is pretty encouraging. And you wait, so you mean you only put it up on Kickstarter four days ago? Yeah. Yep. Wow. And already being at half, that's huge. Yeah, we're we're pretty encouraged by it right now. We're we're pretty excited. And I and I think more than anything, the the sentiment that I have of how important education is for this next generation. I think a lot of people feel that same way and are are passionate about it, which is which is good. <laughs> we, we we would love to see this this project come to life and, and get it into as many many hands as as possible and, and to help. You know, I'm I'm not under this delusion that I'm going to be the next you know woodsy owl, but I, I hope to at least be a voice in that vein and a a positive voice that, you know, when when somebody's out on the trail and and they see garbage, like, oh, I can be a litter hunter. I'm I'm gonna be like Nigel and I'm gonna go and and clean that up and and take care of it. That that's the the real payoff for all of this is that we we raise more nature stewards who will go out and and take care of these places and take the the responsibility and, and kind of that that mantle on them. It's you know, someone is like, why do you go and clean this up? It's not it's not your job. It's, you know, you're not paid to do this. It's not your responsibility. And I always come back, well, on, on the contrary, it's public lands that that's my land. That's your land. You should feel, (laughs) you should feel like you, you should be going out and and taking care of this as as much as I do. Um, I always give the analogy, well, you know, like, and it's a, it's a terrible analogy probably, but you know, people would always in, in those old movies where, you know, some mother would, would leave their child on, on the doorsteps of the church, right? You know, you, you, we've seen those, those tropes before. And while the church practitioners who, who are left with this baby now, while that wasn't their choice to, to leave the baby, it has now become their responsibility and they need to be responsible for taking care of this child and, and how they, uh, you know, how is it raised? How does it get taken care of? And, you know, all these type of things. And that's kind of the same way I, I look at it is I, yeah, I certainly didn't litter and I didn't leave this garbage, but I absolutely do see it as my responsibility to take care of it and more so to take care of nature, to, um, to, to leave it better. And, and that's what the whole, the whole idea is, is how do we, how do we reach as many kids as possible in a positive entertaining and engaging way um, that, you know, when their parents are reading, reading the story to them, that they, they get motivated and excited to, to go out and, and take care of nature. Well, yeah. And I like that you just said, like, parents are going to be reading it to them, obviously, or teachers mm-hmm. are going to be reading this to them. But um, just by this, when you're listening to you describe this book, it is so engaging and so goofy and so out there. But <laughs> I mean, that's what's going to get kids excited to do this. Because if, yeah. you know, if a parent is taking their kid out and just saying, oh, we're going to do a trash pickup. Well, <laughs> that's not necessarily engaging for a seven, eight, nine year old. They, right. it needs to be fun. They need to be these superheroes. So it's only going to spread the word more to children and make them more excited about this. And like you said, I think at a time during this, when people are stuck at home, people are scrolling on social media and they're looking for things to do, like go be Nigel the Litter Hunters. Yeah, it's a great, that's a great way to be, uh, you know, isolate yourself socially, social, social isolation. You know, nobody's going to come talk to you when you're picking up litter. <laughs> like, who's that guy? Uh, yeah, go out on a trail and, uh, you know, keep your six feet distance and whatever uh, responsible thing we need to do. But yeah, now's a great time to, to, to get out and uh, spend some time in, in, in nature and, and, and take care of these places. That, that is kind of my concern right now is, you know, a lot of people are who are responsible are, are really exercising a lot of caution. But 
you know, generally the people that litter don't necessarily uh, pay attention to rules or <laughs> or regulations or anything like that, or otherwise they wouldn't be littering. And you know, I, I kind of worry once this is all over, what you know, what are the trails gonna gonna look like? So yeah, we'll 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 definitely need a lot of litter hunters out there. <laughs> yeah, well, I've heard that some trails have already begun closing with this whole virus going on. Yeah, but and that's true. I can't imagine every single trail is gonna close. I mean, right. that's the only yeah. thing for people to do right now. But even if trails close, like there's still plenty of public land that people can go on that yep. it's not gonna be closed. All public forests or whatever, you know. Yep. So. There's plenty of space for, unfortunately, people to litter. <laughs> unfortunately, yes. But then, yeah, that and that's kind of the whole whole message of this is as much bad as there is in in the world, and unfortunately th there is. Um, I like to to look at the good, and you know, like Mr. Rogers said, you know, in in times of of difficulty, look for the helpers, look for the the people that are out there doing good, and I I'm choosing to focus on on that and and encouraging those to to go out and, and make a difference and i you know i always close every every litter hunter episode with with that sentiment is look even if you pick up one piece of garbage that that makes a difference you don't look i'm kind of going extreme and i'm i'm filling you know two or three bags every time and and it certainly that's not expected from everybody and that, and, I, and and that's where i kind of go with the message of even if you're on your walk and you see one piece of garbage you know pick it up and, and that makes that makes a massive difference, and uh, and and you you don't have to go to these extremes. You can you can make a difference very easily. So do you have um, safety tips? And you know, there's probably a lot of parents that want to advocate this for their children, but they might be worried about the germs on the trash or finding broken glass. So what kind of safety tips do you have for families? Yeah, um, absolutely, and that and that will be also included in, in the back of the book is hey kids <laughs> if you if you go out and, and litter hunt here's a, here's a few things to keep in mind and one of the biggest is, is of course having a litter grabber then you're not having to actually grab physically with your hands the the litter and there is some horrendously disgusting stuff out there and so you know having having a litter grabber is is one step to to help take care of that especially for kids is, is to absolutely have an adult with them. A, a very sad reality is there's, there's drug paraphernalia, um, you know, used needles, which can be extremely dangerous. And, and we've come across that. And, you know, I've led <clears throat> a few uh, larger litter cleanups. And that's one thing I always, I always tell people is, hey, be very careful. Do not, under any circumstances, pick those up with your bare hands. Like, we, we don't want any, any, any type of accident in, in, in that regard. Even this time right now, like I used to pick up cigarette butts, but picking up cigarettes kind of freak me out now with this whole virus going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're not going to talk about uh, people leaving needles <laughs> in, in the children's book. I think we'll leave that uh, for, for another discussion, but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. Having a litter grabber and they're, you know, they're, they're 20 bucks at, at Home Depot. They're, they're, they're pretty inexpensive and they're, they're handy little tools, um, but still use gloves. Absolutely. Always carry hand sanitizer. I always double bag, um, you know, especially if you're picking up broken glass, which is a, a very much a, a, a sad reality. And that, that, that is one thing that is really as a, as a pet peeve, as a parent, you know, my kids love to go and play in the dirt. You know, we kind of have to go out as parents and, and survey, hey, let's make sure that there's not any broken glass around that you can cut yourself on. But uh, yeah, I usually, you know, have the really hefty uh, garbage bags and we'll, and we'll double bag those and, and to kind of help prevent it against, you know, broken glass, you know, cutting through and, and, and breaking through, you know, that that's kind of the the three main things have a bag with you have the litter grabber gloves and have uh, hand sanitizer and then for kids that want to do this you know have definitely have uh, some parental uh, supervision but yeah those are kind of the the main ones because uh, garbage can be uh, pretty gross <laughs> yeah absolutely but I mean I love how simple those tips are I mean everybody has garbage bags and gloves the the grabber is probably something a lot of people might need to go get, but you know, you can start small with bags and gloves and it's, it's really simple. Yeah. It, it, especially if you're just on the trail and you see, I mean, more than likely like on the trails, what it is, is it, it's a, it's the single use plastic water bottles that, 
and you know either either carelessly had had fallen out of a bag or or were just purposely left behind whatever the case you know those are pretty easy just to pick up with your hands a lot of the times it's the, you know it's a, the granola bar wrappers that could easily fall out of a pocket and unfortunately there's a lot of um, accidental litter you know if you're in your pockets and you had a wrapper in there and you pull your hand out and it fell out maybe you didn't even know uh, and, th and that does happen, but it, it's still important to, you know, if you still find that, then to, to go out and pick it up. And then there's, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, that blatantly leave, uh, leave litter behind. Um, but yeah, you know, if it's, if it's the wrapper, it's the water bottle, those type of things are easily, you know, pick those up with your gloves. If it, if it kind of gets into more, yeah, there's, there's clothing articles, it's the cigarette butts, um, gosh. The diapers. <laughs> The di and oh my gosh, the diapers, the diapers are, you know, the diapers, the used condoms, the, the tampons, all, you know, all of those, about, you're just like, holy cow, this is like, this is so gross. And that's where you definitely want the, uh, you know, the litter grabber. And, and that's where we try to make it fun at, on, on the videos is, you know, Mr. Grabs has his own personality. And, you know, the last thing he enjoys is, is having to put dirty diapers and all those nasty things in his, in his mouth. He, he does the real dirty work. He's, he's got the tough job there. <laughs> exactly. And so where does your whole, this, um, you are also the founder of Adventure Responsibly, is that correct? Yeah. So that is a, a kind of a side project and, and more or less along, along those lines of this, this idea that outdoor popularity has, has outpaced awareness. More and more, I just saw news story after news story of, well, litter, of course, vandalism in our national parks, and people who were getting outside, again, great, but not remotely prepared for a wilderness experience. And I'll, and I'll give a couple really quick examples. Uh, I took my dad to the Narrows for the first time, which was, which was a fun experience, the, the, the Zion Narrows, the famous Zion Narrows. And we got up, we were first bus, we were first in there, we were you know, an hour and a half up the, uh, up the river, no one around, not a single soul. And then this, this girl was, was hiking down toward us. And we're like, there's no way that someone got off the bus and was already up there and turning around again. There, there's just, there's just no way we're like what's going on. And she was just disheveled, just, you could tell something was wrong. And we're like, are you, are you okay? And she's like, I'm, I'm from California, nothing against Californians, I'm just giving the, uh, the scope here. Uh, you know, I'm from California, I really wanted to do this hike, I went up to the, uh, to the campsite last night, and, and all I had is my hammock, and there's no trees strong enough or, or close enough together to hang a hammock, so she had to sleep on the ground. She thought that it was, word for word, she goes, I thought it was going to be really hot and warm. I mean, it's the desert. It's like, well, yeah, but you're also a thousand foot walls on either side that barely see the sun. So it's freezing in there. So she slept on the ground just with a, a very thin hammock for a blanket. And she didn't check her propane before she left. So she didn't have anything even to cook her food on. So she's starving. She's thirsty. She's freezing. And we gave her some water. We gave her some, some granola bars. So she didn't have any essentials with her. No, nothing. And we even offered, you know, I'm, I'm there for photography purposes. I'm here with my dad showing him this great place. And we're, we're like, do you want us to walk down with you? you know, are you going to be okay to get back to the, to the bus stop and the, and the station? She thinks she's, you know, she's, she's like, no, I'm fine. I got this food and, you know, assured that I'm, I'm on the right path and, and, and it's not too far. And it's like, oh, okay. I kind of still felt bad leaving her, but, um, and then, and it was that. And then another one was uh, my friend and I, actually Alex, who's illustrating the book with me, uh, we were, you know, what was then a, a pretty remote area um, in Grand Staircase as Kalani, and we had just gotten back from hiking out to a to a slot canyon. Uh, we were we were coming back and just about to uh, to get to the uh, to the end of the trail, back to our car, and this uh, this this car stops, and they go, "Hey, do you know where where this and this such and such places?" We're like, "Yeah, but you know, you still got another twenty or so miles down this pretty rough dirt road." I go, oh, oh, well, we, we just saw it on Instagram and just thought it was like right here. You know, you just pulled up to it. That there was a paved road. I mean, they're, they're seriously like, we just thought there was a paved road that you went to it and walked. And we're like, no, it's, it's, you got to drive here. And then it's like, <laughs> like a six mile round trip uh, hike. And, and there's no shade. And we're like, do you guys have water? And they're like, oh yeah, we have a water bottle each, you know, and it's, it's like June with no shade. And we're like, you guys are not prepared flat out. Do not 
to not do this. And so they, they did thankfully turn their car around and, and leave them. And the other, you know, of course they're disappointed. You know, they see Instagram as, as a reality, which it's not. And they went out and they wanted to go and see these cool things and, and just were not prepared for this wilderness experience. And, and, and with that and the news story after news story of, of the vandalism going on in the national parks and, and all these things, I just, you know, it was just very real to me that there is a disconnect and people love the adventure, but they don't think through it. And they don't think about what they need to do to have a, and be prepared for a, a wilderness experience. And so this whole uh, thing came out of, of adventure responsibly. Well, and I mean, just those examples you gave of people that were just adventuring in Utah, just not not really experienced, saw it on social media. I mean, there's so many people out there who are doing these types of things. And it only takes a very, very small amount of research to be exactly. prepared. There, there, there's, there's really, in our day and age, with the resources that are available, there's, there's no excuse uh, for that, you know, and there's the stories of people having to be rescued because they went on this backpacking, you know, trail in, in flip-flops or, or high heels or, you know, a lot of the guys are wearing flip-flops out there or, or chocolates or whatever. It's like, please, your, your feet are going to be destroyed. And yeah, so it, it, it's very much messaging of be prepared, go on an adventure. That's awesome. Love it. Love people getting outdoors. The more people that get outdoors and, and experience it, that's one more advocate that, that we can have, hopefully. But <laughs> if you do go outdoors, you know, think about the 10 essentials. Think about leave no trace. Think about even going further and above and beyond that uh, is leaving it better. Think about how your actions uh, impact the, uh, you know, not only the world that you're visiting and the area you're visiting, but also when you post to social media, what is that? Um, what, what do your pictures portray? What is your what do your actions um, convey to your to your followings? It's just much more. How do you have a more prepared and mindful experience out in the wild? And you know, there's it's it's definitely some uh, tongue in cheek things. I, I've got shirts that say "Clean up your." I don't know. Can we swear on here? I don't know. Uh, You're good. Yes, you can. <laughs> it, it says "Clean up your shit," but the eye is is replaced with a tree. You know, some of it's pretty blunt. Uh, there's there's another shirt that says "Don't be a trash hole." <laughs> that's that's my uh, that's what I I have dubbed litter bugs. I thought I've always thought litter bug was a little bit too cute of a word, so I, I've started calling them trash holes. That's not in the book. That, I know that's not very kid friendly, so we we <laughs> didn't we didn't put trash hole in the book. Um, but then it's also very much um, you know messaging of of leaving it better than you found it. It's uh, and and it also is a way uh, for you know how can I how can I help to support these places that, that definitely need support? And so a lot, large chunk of the proceeds goes to the National Park Foundation. It goes to organizing litter cleanups and being able, you know, when, when I call for people to meet up with me, I've got the gloves, I've got the hand sanitizer, I, which is a very hot commodity right now. I've got the, uh, the garbage bags to, to pass out to people, you know, so a lot of the, uh, the funding goes, goes to that, but it's really just uh, messaging on, on how to be a good land steward and how to be prepared. Um, you're gonna have a much better time in the wild when <laughs> when you're not shivering to death or, or uh, covered in blisters because you didn't, you, di you just didn't do some, some simple research. So the idea is, is to hopefully um, lessen this gap, um, to, to, to shorten this gap that, that we've got, this disconnect that we have of, of what is portrayed of, of the outdoors on social media to what the actual realities are and, and people just, you know, they see these cool places and they don't think, oh, the environment could be pretty harsh and unforgiving. Uh, maybe I better, uh, you know, check my 10 essentials, you know, and that, and that's the thing, you know, people just don't even know what the 10 essentials are anymore, but she's just, you know, just crazy. It blows my mind when I see people without water on like a five mile hike. Like there's a really popular hike here in Minnesota called Bean and Bear Lake up north. And I have continuously seen people doing this intense, somewhat intense hike without water. Yeah. It, it just blows my mind in the middle of summer. Yeah, it, it's crazy. And, and, and I see that more and more here. I mean, I, I had a, a couple guys out with me. We were doing a, a litter cleanup um, just at this very popular overlook in Salt Lake. And it's right across from a trailhead, the Mount Olympus Trailhead, which is, again, is, is quite punishing of a, of a trail. and this guy comes down 
one, he's in jeans and it's like the middle of summer. So he's dying of, of heat. And I can't even imagine the, the chafing, but he didn't have any, he brought up one small bottle with him of, of water, you know, like one of those you know, 16 ounces and he, and he sees us and he's like, do you guys have any water? I mean, he's just clearly partial. We're like, yeah, we, we did. we've got some water. What are you doing? And, you know, again, he, he was from out of town. He's on a business trip. He's like, oh, I just saw this hike and thought it looked cool and just, just went. It's like, wow, you didn't think to bring more water or, or, or any, anything with you. And yeah, there's, there's definitely a need. And, and as much as, you know, organizations like Leave No Trace and, and you know, there's, there's a few others out there that, that, are, that are all around it you know, clearly there's, there's a lot more voices that, that need to be out there and, and help to kind of change this tide of, yeah, it's a cool picture of a, of a very pretty place, but what's the reality behind it? And, and if you go to those places, are you prepared? Are you, are you ready for, for the challenges ahead? You know, do you have even a small first aid kit with you? Do you have enough water? Do you have the proper hiking uh, apparel and a, and a tire and, and, you know, all those type of things that people just don't, Clearly, you know, given the news stories, people just don't, and personal stories that, that, that I've witnessed, people just don't, don't think about, about that. And so that's really the, the, main, the main thing about all this is how can we get more messaging out there and um, help to bridge that gap? But then also, how can I kind of turn that into, how do I help these places that, that I love and, and be able to, in, in some small way, contribute um, and, and give back to them as well? Yeah. And I think like for any outdoor advocates, like obviously we support and love that message, but the people who need to hear it are those that aren't prepared. So. Yep. And, and, and that's a big part of as well as is, is the hope that when people see, you know, kind of the messaging out there of, of adventure responsibly and, and it's, you know, it started to become more of a, of a hashtag, which is awesome. You know, people will tag ha adventure responsibly and, and, and hopefully people see that and think, well, well what does that mean? What, you know, you know, I got, I've got people that, that will email me and they'll say, I was wearing my adventure responsibly shirt. And someone stopped and asked, you know, what is that? What does that mean? And I was able to, to talk to them all about it. And, and, you know, that's cool. That's, that's really great to see. Ed education is, is that, that's what this is all about is, is how do we educate people to have a, a safe, responsible, enjoyable time in, in the great outdoors. Maybe your next children's book is going to be about adventuring responsibly once <laughs> once nigel the litter hunter takes off that's that would be you know i always i always love the the little critter uh books you know as a kid and i read those to my kids as well and they were they always kind of have a little moral to them and and are, are, are fun and, and yeah, yeah i kind of i if this if this is successful and, and takes off you know this is kind of the nigel the litter hunter but the next one could be nigel talks about the 10 essentials, <laughs> you know, and how do we, <laughs> you know, just very, very simple things. And if we can get, get to that younger generation and they can grow up with those things, um, hopefully that, that makes a difference that, you know, that's kind of what, what keeps me going and, and uh, makes it all worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if people wanted to support the Kickstarter for Nigel, the Litter Hunter, where could they go? Yes, it's a very, uh, they don't make anything easy with with uh urls well we'll put the link in the show notes too okay yeah. i can uh it's kickstarter.com <laughs> backslash projects backslash back slash litter hunter backslash nigel dash the dash litter dash hunter dash uh dash children's dash book yeah that's that's really fun that's a mouthful yeah no worries yeah that link <laughs> That link will be in our show notes. Yes, so. awesome. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll send that to you. But yeah, it's a it's Kickstarter. Um, you know, and we try to make the the rewards fun. You know, there can be a five dollar. You know, you know, there's a lot of people that that uh, believe in the project, and and that's all they can give, and that's that's great. You know, um, it's very appreciated. They'll they'll get a a virtual high five, which is even more applicable in in today's terms and world. We we just give we don't do handshakes. We just give virtual high fives now, um, and you know it kind of goes uh, from there. You can do fifteen bucks, and that gives you uh, you know some leave it better stickers and coloring pages for the kids. Uh, and then twenty five bucks will will get you all that plus a copy of the book, and then you know it kind of goes from there. You know you can get a uh, a leave it better than you found it hat. Uh, get your name in in the book as a special contributor, just you know, depending on on what level. So we try to make it uh, fun and engaging for for people to kind of rally around and and make make the rewards 
exciting. Hopefully people are excited as well about the, you know, getting, getting the book and um, being able to, to read that to their kids. So yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty excited about it. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, as, as with anything, you know, any, any uh, crowdfunding is, has always got, got risks to it, but we're, we're pretty pumped that we're uh, where we are now, especially uh, a book about picking up litter. <laughs> you know, that's not, <laughs> that's not like, the uh, the hot button issue right now on on top of anybody's anybody's mind you know a book about picking up litter well okay but uh, well, yeah we're we're pretty pumped with with the success of it so far and so you said this is four days in what is the final day where people can support this project April sixteenth so it had thirty days um, yeah so it's half halfway there so we're now it's kind of the up uphill battle you know we had all the it's 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 funny because you know it's just funny how these things work out. I, I had our, our local news guy reach out to me um, from from one of the popular stations here one night and he goes, hey, this is awesome. This is like a feel-good story that people need right now, especially with just all the craziness going on. And and we were we were all set to do an interview the next day. And then Utah had a, a 5.8 earthquake. The <laughs> earthquake. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, my brother, my brother and his wife live there and they were texting us that morning and I'm like, whoa, in the midst of this virus, now there's an it's earthquake like, happening. You've got to be kidding me. And, and so I, I sent him a message. I go, uh, my guess is we'll, we'll probably have to postpone that. He goes, yeah, that's <laughs> It's like talk about timing. <laughs> Holy cow! So hopefully, hopefully next week that that's still on the uh, on on the old docket, pending no uh, <laughs> no more earth, earthquakes. But yeah, did you feel that earthquake? Oh yeah, it it woke us all all up. My um, yeah, it, it it definitely was uh, was one that was was felt. Um, you know, five point seven is pretty good. You know, people in California were like, "Oh, that's a Tuesday for us," but you know. For us, it was like holy cow! I mean, that was that was pretty intense. But uh, and then the, you know, the aftershocks were were actually pretty. Uh, you know, there a couple of them were like in the fours, and you know, it, 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 they're not causing massive damage or anything. You know, unfortunately, there there were some homes lost at the at the epicenter, and it's very it's very sad. We were pretty fortunate to to not be um, that close to it. You know, where we where we still definitely felt it, and it was, you know, a. a no, no pun intended. A, a raffling experience, but yeah, it was it was crazy. It was it was wild. My kids were a little 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 wigged out. <laughs> I can imagine. So yeah, I mean, do did they? How old are they? Did they fully understand what was happening? Yeah, my my daughter's ten, and my son's almost eight. And so they, yeah. So my daughter, she was she was she had already woken up, and she was just reading quietly in her in her bed. You know, it was like 7 a.m. and and then it hit and she like she was fully awake and started screaming like what like what is going on and you know we were we were running down the hall like to make sure the kids were okay and it, it didn't last very long when we were we were like all right you got to get under your desks and all that good stuff but yeah it was it was wild it was it was crazy we're always told here in Utah you know we live along fault lines everywhere here it's definitely coming be prepared and it, it, you realize very quickly that you are not in control of life at all. <laughs> one, one minute you're just sleeping quietly and peacefully and, and the next minute there's, there's an earthquake and you, you cannot plan or anticipate that. So it put, puts a lot of things in perspective and yeah, it was, it was wild. It was, it was crazy. Not, not a pleasant experience. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. And yeah, just like you said, we're not in control of anything, especially just going back to this virus and pandemic that is affecting the entire world right now. I mean, nobody can really control that. The only way we can control it is by staying in our house. But. Yeah, exactly. And uh, definitely get out and, and, and social distance. My, my concern, especially with that, is and this is definitely taking a, a, a different path, but Zion National Park posted a picture of Angels Landing and it's got just there's probably 100 people in that picture and they're all holding onto the rails. And, you know, it's like, Folks, you are clearly not grasping <laughs> what social distancing means, and, and you know it's a hard call, especially for the parks. I mean, they're already strapped and and, and struggling, and then this happens. And I get that they don't want to want to close the parks, and they want to keep you know, right. Well, and like just going back to the fact that you know, like getting outside during this time is what people need. So that's probably what all of those people 
at Angel's Landing, and we're oh, thinking, yeah. oh, this is going to be so rejuvenating <laughs> for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll get out and nature's going to be great. And then they don't think, oh, I'm surrounded by 100 plus people and are all touching the same. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that the park rangers are up there Lysol wiping the, the chain every after every person descends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you would never think that you would have to disinfect nature necessarily. Oh, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's just, we're, we're living in very, very crazy times. And, and maybe people, you know, kind of think I'm, I'm crazy. They're like, oh, we've got world hunger and there's, there's so many issues out there. Now there's a pandemic. Oh, does litter really matter? And, you know, the answer is, well, yeah, it, it does. And it, it's, you know, despite all of those horrible things and climate change and, and, and all of that, you know, we can all still take care of things in our, in our own way and, and contribute in our, in our own way. And yeah, it does, it does matter. Um, uh, having a clean, clean environment goes a long way and, and being able to enjoy the outdoors and, and not see litter. Uh, you know, I think that's definitely a worthwhile cause in spite of <laughs> all the, all the terrible things that are, that are, that are going on. And we can at least feel, you know, when we go out and we, we take care of nature that we're at least uh, in, in some small way helping you know contribute in a in a positive way and how can that be uh, negative and and that's that's a lot of the, the things that I face right now on on social media is I try to be very educational and I I, I try to not be as uh, very um, confrontational if I if you know if I see a, a photo online one example is there's a guy that took his dog to to arches um, and had it off leash on a trail and you know it's it very clearly pointed out on the website look pets are welcome but only in certain areas and they can't be off off leash and i just commented hey you know arches is awesome looks like you got you and the pup are having a having a blast maybe you didn't know this uh, but, but dogs aren't actually allowed off leash on the trails just thought you know give you a friendly heads up and the dude just came at me just extremely hard he's like and and kind of used that same argument of there's so many other things going on in the world and you know screw you you know who cares if i've got my dog off leash it doesn't it doesn't matter and like well I, I i get that argument but it does matter because it's a park rule and yeah a dog off leash isn't the end of the world i i clearly understand that but when we have disregard for even the simplest of rules that kind of perpetuates and that snowballs into other issues and so yeah let's all let's be respectful and that kind of goes back to the adventure responsibly thing right yeah be respectful of the rules maybe you don't agree with them maybe they suck maybe they're stupid there's a lot of rules that, that i kind of think are dumb but i still adhere to them because you know that's what responsible <laughs> citizens uh and uh, do and and uh, and that helps to prevent uh much larger uh, issues that that continue to uh, perpetuate. So yeah, I'm 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 definitely that guy. <laughs> I mean, I think that's really important to have those people out there. I mean, I've told people about the leash thing too, because there's animals that are living at national parks. That's going to scare the animals away. Not to mention, you know, like we have a dog that we bring on trails, and she's a reactive dog. She will bite other dogs if they come charging at her and these dog owners don't think about it that way so that's yeah that drives yeah, some, us sometimes crazy. it's uh it, you know it's it's safety for them it's safety for you there's there's a lot of lots of a lot of reasoning behind it and and that's kind of going back to the litter thing and you know i read read a great book uh, by by malcolm gladwell uh that talked about this book called tipping tipping point and and he brings up a lot of things of 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 how very small acts can lead to very big consequences. The consequences can be good or bad, right? And he talks about this theory called broken windows theory, where if you're in a neighborhood and the and the windows are broken, you know maybe the yards aren't taken care of, the windows are broken, and it just kind of looks run, run down, then people are automatically going to think, oh, this this place isn't really worth uh, caring for, and you know they they've kind of associated it with with higher crime rates and and, and kind of mm -hmm. builds and perpetuates from there and and I kind of look at that in the same way with uh, with nature and, and litter is if people see litter then they are going to think oh well this place isn't necessarily worth uh, protecting or, or taking care of or well if there's litter already here what does it matter if I leave my litter here mm -hmm. and and this just kind of snowballs and, and if I can leave litter here then you know, maybe, um, you know, tagging my name in the tree doesn't, doesn't matter. Or, you know, you know, it kind of just 
it goes on to these uh these these different things and and so that's that's my big deal is yeah let's let's take care of these little things picking up litter is easy we can make a make a, a big difference and, and take care of it and um hopefully stop these larger consequences of of vandalism in the national parks and, and real damage by taking care of these of these small things and doing these these smaller acts. So, you know, when people say, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, I, I beg to differ. I think it has a big impact. Huge. Yeah. So um, there's another children's book. I'm sending you this link right now. I just sent it. I don't know if you're like looking to network with other authors in this topic, but this one might be a good one for you to look into. It's Litter Bug Doug and Michael Recycle. And hmm. just by the way that you describe describe your book, I think that this is very, very similar yeah. in like this sense of humor and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I have a copy of that book that I was thinking of when you were talking about this. I was like, wow, you know, this would be really, really good for you to get in That's touch awesome. with. I don't know if yeah. Just an idea for you. Cool. <laughs> Little bug Doug is lazy. He's yeah. Hello. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of that. Uh, that it, it's funny when when you start kind of going down the you know you start on on a project and then you'll it's it's almost like you liken it to when you buy a car you've never seen that car out on the road and then when you have the car all of a sudden you start seeing the same car everywhere you're like what the heck and it, yeah it's kind of the the same light as there's there's you start to see. Oh, there's some other similar things. And that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's all geared toward education and, and getting the word out. And how do we uh, reach, reach this next generation to be better stewards and, and take care of this, you know, this place we call home. We're all, we're all here on this planet together. We, we got to take care of it. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, I might have to, I'll have to pick that one up myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so before we get off, do you have a favorite place in Utah that you like to go hike with your family and what's your favorite activity that outdoor activity you do with your family? Yeah, we, we try to get out as, as much as possible, especially in the, in the warmer months. You know, we, we like to, to ski a lot together as a, as a family in the, in the winter time. And then in the summer, there, there's just so many great trails in, in Utah. I, you know, I already talked about one is, is the Uintas and that's just a, I mean, no, you know, it's, it's, you know, most people think of Utah and they think, oh, it's this barren desert of, of red rock, which is beautiful. Uh, but the Uintas, you know, you, you go up and it's this, this alpine mountainous region. And uh, e even the, the, the Cottonwood Canyon is very, very close by or, or very much the same. And uh, there's just so many amazing trails out there. And we, we just try to get out as, as much as possible to those locally. And especially if the kids are, you know, feeling a little cooped up one day, it's like, all right, why don't we go and, and, and hit a trail and, and, uh, and get out. And that, that's always a great reset. Um, our favorite place is, uh, oh my gosh, we just had another aftershock. My whole, my whole desk just shook. <laughs> no way, just now? Yes. <laughs> That's wild. That's still happening. Yeah, oh my they, gosh, they, that was. Yeah, they said we were going to have uh, aftershocks like for like a week. So yeah. Whoa. That is wild. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, but yeah, so one of our favorite places is uh, well, two is, is uh, Bryce Canyon National Park is just hands down. I, and 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 one is it's incredibly beautiful, but I I think there's also just some nostalgia. We we started going there from when my daughter was. I think she was six months when, when we took her there the first time. We've just gone every year um, and, and camped there. And, and, and they've got some great camping areas uh, where you can either tent camp or, or uh, you know, trailer camp. Or they've even got uh, some fun teepees that you can, you can rent. And those are, those are really cool. And uh, easy hikes for the kids. Incredible jaw-dropping beauty. Just a, a wonderful, especially in the summer because it's, uh, you know, it's 9,000 elevation. So it's it's warm but it's not like holy cow southern utah deathly hot warm and so that that's probably hands down one of our favorite places to go but then we uh, we love to go uh, river rafting in in moab and we we try to make that an annual trip where we take the kids out and uh, you know it's it's, in, it's incredibly important to me to to get them in the outdoors and they and they love being outdoors and it's a great reset gets them away from from the technology for a bit and, and more importantly, it, it's helping them to, to gain an appreciation and, you know, they, they love getting outdoors and that, that's really fulfilling and, you know, for me and, and makes me r really happy to see how outdoorsy their, 
they're becoming. So yeah, that uh, couple of those places, get, getting out in the in the mountains if you need it. But Southern Utah is Southern Utah for me is, uh, and I'm getting weird here. I I know, but it's uh, kind of a spiritual place. The desert uh, out there is just. And I hate the term otherworldly. It was like, oh, I'm on Mars. Like, okay, you're, you're just in Utah. But uh, it is, there's something about it. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely a rejuvenating and um, spiritual uh, place for me. And I, and I, and I, and I know that my, my kids, maybe they don't quite understand it, but they, they definitely feel it um, when they're out in, in nature and experiencing those places. And, you, you know, you take, you know, you're going on your hikes and you're doing all these fun activities, but then it's really important to, to stop and, and, you know, maybe just close your eyes and, and you feel, feel the wind and you, you feel with your other senses and you, you smell the sagebrush and the, and the sand. And, um, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting weird and I, and I normally don't share this. No, but you know things, what, as so. you're, as you're saying this, it's, um, Reminding me a lot of someone I interviewed a while back, Kai Spello, about her poetry. She lives in New Mexico, and she speaks about New Mexico in a very similar way, and just says it's just like a place you've never been before. And land, land of enchantment. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that, that's definitely kind of what I'm all about is is getting outdoors, helping other people to to get outdoors as well, in a, you know, an ethical and a, and a responsible way, and and uh when we're all doing that it's it's better for the environment it's better for us and, and we can all have a have a have a great time <laughs> yeah utah's definitely on my list of places to go like like i said my brother and his wife moved out there so we're gonna get out there and visit it's, them uh, it's awesome it's a good it's a great place i, I can't complain i've grew up in oregon and in idaho and stayed in utah we've had some opportunities to to move to a couple other states and just said you know what Utah, Utah's home. People, people might think, you know, it gets a, it's, it gets a little bad rap for, you know, there's some peculiarities of, of course, but uh, overall, I'll, I'll take the positives. <laughs> right, exactly. Got to look at the positives, like you said. Well, this has been awesome. Is there, I mean, we touched on a lot today. Is there anything else you want to say to our listeners other than pick up your trash? Yeah, pick up your garbage. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you know, in, in summary, if, if I could just leave with, with one thing is, is to leave it better than you found it. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take a lot of effort. If you are outdoorsy and you care about these places, take a garbage bag with you. It's, it's unfortunate that that's the case, but yeah, take a garbage, garbage bag with you. Hopefully you don't find anything, but if you do take a second and, and clean it up and, and leave it better than you found it. That's the biggest thing. If we all do a little, it helps a lot. Absolutely think that's a great message. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome to have you on, Phil. No, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate it and uh, have, have been honored to, to be, be on here. I'm so glad you reached out. Phil's enthusiasm is so contagious, and I just wish that we could take his enthusiasm and sprinkle it all over the world because I think there would be no more litter. And knowing that Phil got motivated when he saw two tourists just kind of dump trash outside of a trailhead was really quite heartbreaking because I know that that happens often as well. So if there were so many advocates like Phil out in this world, it could just be such a better place and so litter free. Listening to Phil is just so motivating and I really am excited for his book to be coming out. Uh, make sure that you guys go check that out. The last day to support that is April 16th. Yeah, so if you're interested, go to the link that's in the description of this podcast episode and it will take you right to that Kickstarter page and feel free to donate as you wish. Um, they have listed out there the various um, levels and cool things that you can receive for, you know, each of your donations. And honestly, once you start picking trash up, it becomes kind of this addiction. And you'll just want to do it all the time. And you'll be looking for it all the time. I mean, that's kind of how it's become for us. So maybe that will be you in the future. Yeah, to be honest, I'll admit that I was one of those people that would always walk by and see litter on the ground 
but not take the time to actually stop and pick it up. I, I was always thinking, you know, somebody else will come along and pick it up. But if everyone thought that way, then nothing would ever get picked up. So it is something that I've been changing um, as far as my habits. And I will pick up some of the trash that I see along the trail now, especially when Sarah and I go out with Daisy and we're in our own neighborhood at our own parks. It's so nice to go out after you've kind of done that initial cleanup and just notice how, how much it's changed. And also, once we started doing this, we we noticed on our walks that we see a lot more trash than we used to see just because we were not looking for it then. And when you start looking for it, it starts popping up everywhere. So like you guys were saying in the episode, it's not that hard. It's an easy thing to do. Just have to bring along either a pair of gloves or one of those trash grabbers, a bag to throw it all in. But yeah, even if you go out and just pick up a couple things, and if you do that every single time, eventually you'll see the difference that it's making. And with our shelter in place right now, we already said this is the perfect break to go get yourself outside. And it's that time of year right now where all the snow is melted and everything that got buried and covered up by the snow is showing itself now. So all of that trash is, is becoming visible. It's just kind of one of those things where once we've started talking about it on the podcast, it's just something I've been noticing a lot more. And it's kind of cool to see, like you said, like people out now, now that we're kind of restricted from doing a lot of things and we're sheltered in place. Um, with the nicer weather coming, we've been seeing a lot more people just out and getting outdoors and going on a walk, going on a bike ride, just kind of getting out of the house for a moment. And, you know, if you just add in that little bit of picking up a couple pieces of trash every time you do go out, I think it'll make a big difference. With that, go on a trashy walk. Thanks for listening. We love sharing these stories with you through the Hiking Through Life podcast, and we're so grateful that you listen to this podcast. If you'd like to support the Hiking Through Life podcast further, we have these amazing new t-shirts and water bottles. The t-shirts come in four colors, and the water bottles are perfect for trails, adventuring, or daily use. Consider checking them out at hikingthroughlife.net slash shop. Use the code podcast and receive 10% off your first order. You've been listening to the Hiking Through Life podcast. Peace, love, and hike through life.